Hello YouTube, it's Dequita Carva. Um, before we get started, let's go into a prayer. I got a um, good message I want to give to you today. Um, it's gonna give you. It's gonna be very insightful, very informative. So, um, grab a cup of coffee, grab some popcorn, whatever you want to do, and just sit down and just get ready to be entertained by Dequita Carva and by the Holy Spirit. All right, it's gonna move through these airwaves. So let's go ahead and um, lift our Father up right now for giving us a um, encouraging word and. Um, Let's go ahead and move forward. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for all the things that you're doing in my life, the things that you're doing for this ministry, the people that you're bringing to this ministry, Lord. We thank you for the encouraging words that have um, come to this ministry, the letters that have been sent, Lord. Father God, I discover every um, person that listens to this um, this video, Lord. I bless them right now. I bless their households, Lord. I cover them with the blood of Yeshua from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet right now, Lord. Look, I make you bless their provisions, Lord. Look, I let you uh, ask that your Holy Spirit move through them, Lord. Let them be able to understand this word that is coming to them, Lord. Let them receive this bread with open ears and um, open eyes, Lord. Let them be able to seek you for any type of discernment that is needed or any additional information that you have to add on to this this video, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this all of the wonderful things that you're doing right now in the world, Lord. We thank you for healing the nations right now. We thank you for uh, the breakthroughs that are taking place, the redemption that is taking place, Lord. We thank you for our risen Savior, Lord. We just thank you for all of the things that you're doing over our lives, Lord, and we trust in you, Lord. Look, like I remind us, Lord, continue to remind us, Lord, to endure as we go through these fiery trials, Lord. Continue to strengthen us, Lord, and continue to ground us in faith, Lord. And we just thank you for the wonderful things that you're doing, Lord. We bless your holy name and Yeshua's mighty name. We say amen. All right. So um, there's a lot of things that's taking place right now in um, my life. Um, I've received some letters from you all, so, you know, from some of you people. And um, I made a point to contact... Um, to contact um, one uh, lady that I've been talking to lately. Um, this for, the, for those of you who don't know, the prayer line is open again. Um, make sure that you participate on the prayer line on Saturdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's not open today. It's, I usually have it on Tuesday and Saturday. Um, one Tuesday I forgot, so I completely apologize for that. So much going on, and I forgot. So um, I apologize for that. And it won't be a prayer. It won't be anything today. So Saturday at 6 p.m., is the prayer line is open and whatever I do any broad like broad I'm sorry live broadcasting I will also um take any prayers at that time as well all right and um you can you know expect to receive a live broadcast in sometime this week okay all right so um some of you have been following this channel um and I thank you for those who have sent in support also I'm not going to call your names out you know who you are um a lot of people would like to remain remain anonymous so um, I won't call your names out, but I thank you so much for the effort that you have put into, um, you know, uh, given to this ministry. I thank you so much because it, everything is being done to come against this ministry. They won't even cash some of the more money orders that have been sent out to me. So, um, I thank you and I appreciate you all for what you're doing right now. All right. So let's go into, um, let's just go into something. I'm going to share with you, um, something that the Lord is taking me through right now. And I also want to point out, there are some comments that have been made from, um, uh, a, a, I guess her name, her handle name is um, Holy T. Um, Holy T, I kind of understand where you're coming from. It seems like you have the, the knowledge that I have um, in terms of some of the things that you're speaking about. Um, I definitely understand where you're coming from. I definitely know where, what you're getting at. However, um, you lost me on the point of, of Israel. But I, I totally understand the whole, the twos and, and you know, the, the um, to, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I understand the whole, um, the whole, uh, what, do you, what I want to refer to that as the, um, and I'm talking about that, like the Ark of the Covenant, if you want to, if you really want to be specific, the two cherubs and the, the um, if you really want to get to, if you really want to get to the, the specifics of it. I understand the two, you know, the cutting the, the baby in peace and, and so forth. I understand that whole duality thing. Um, and I'm not really sure what your perspective is on that or what you're trying to communicate to me. Um, but I would definitely be interested in hearing more of what you have to say um, as it relates to that. Um, and the only reason why is because, like, I listen, I look at a lot of comments and some of you, I, I understand that, you know, the spirit is with you or, I, you know, sometimes yeah, 
you can tell that there's a little bit of knowledge coming from that person, that they have some sort of knowledge and understanding on um, the scripture and um, the Bible um, has been revealed. So, you know, some certain things I understand um, from a deeper perspective, if that makes any sense. So I, I get the whole concept of what you're going into, but you lost me on the um, the Israelite part. And as far as the, the other things that you spoke of, the waters and the tubes, I don't, I don't know anything about that. You know, my experience, I think all of our targeting experiences are different. But, um, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit today of what the Lord has been doing for me or what he's been showing me. Um, so this is going to be very insightful for a lot of you. So, you know, and this goes back to the trouble that I had back in February, not of this year, but of, I think it was 2016, where I told you, you know, the, the voices with the don't eat that, don't eat that. And it took me this long right now to show me, to, to, to um, understand that the Lord was showing me my past. Okay, so we understand, I talked about this before in my, in my previous videos. The house of God is being judged right now. Why? Why is the house of God being judged? Well, who is the house of God? Okay, the 144,000. Okay, so the, the house of God is being judged right now. We're going through judgment right now. Why? Because we're the first fruits and we're the first fruits. And we have to basically be able to um, lead those who are, who are going to experience the same challenges that we experienced. So basically, we're going through it first. Okay, so we are being judged first because we're about to be removed. All right, so we're being judged first because we're about to go right in. When I say removed, meaning that we're about to go right into the swing of things. Like we're going to be sealed with the Holy Spirit and then we're not. We're going to become um, uh, immune or um, unimpacted by any uh, further judgment because of, of the seal of the Holy Spirit. And we have already been judged. Okay. So what this means is in order to judge something or in order to help or protect someone, you have to understand what they're going through. You have to have to have understood what they're experiencing. The only way that you can help anybody is to have gone through that experience, to have gone through that, that tribulation yourself in order to help them. It's just like Yeshua, like when he came in and dwelt on the earth, he can't speak to our, he can't judge us I mean, fairly. If you want to say he can't judge us fairly without first coming to understand how it's like to do, to live in the earth, how it's like to be tempted, how it's like to be um, uh, to receive um, hate and so forth. He has experienced it before he can judge us, uh, judge us righteously. OK, so a lot of that. So that a lot of the um, things that we're going through right now is because of that purpose. How can we how can we help and understand their experience if we haven't lived through it ourselves? So um, a lot of the things that we're receiving right now, we, we you know, especially for me, because my attacks have been this crazy. It's it's been ongoing, and I've been praying and praying and praying, and um, the Lord is finally not finally because He's been showing me all along, but I guess I'm finally understanding, you know, um, exactly what He's showing me. But He's showing me my past, and when I speak about certain experience, the garden experience, all of these things, He's basically showing me who I was in the past. Because I told you there'll be like certain thoughts that come, you know, and it's just like, what is all, of, you know, what is all of this stuff happening, happening? But these are things. And let me just show you how he revealed this. Um, I've always, in my life is so divine. It's so, I mean, from the names of people that are in my life, they have every, God does nothing without a meaning. And I'm telling you, like he is, nothing in your life is done. If you really sit back and reflect and look at your life, the meaning of your name, the meaning, and my name is ghetto, so I don't, that don't, really doesn't apply. But my middle name, all of the things that I'm going through. Um, the streets you grew up on, the names of the street, what they mean, um, the address, you know, all these things, when you really understand that the places you live, they, they have a lot of meaning and it's significance and they all tie into the same story. Okay. Um, everybody's experience is unique and specific to their life and specific to their purpose. Okay. So, uh, a lot of things that he's showed me and I'm just, that was creating confusion is like, I'm like, what does this have to do? You know, he's showing me things. But he's showing me my past. He's showing me what I'm being judged on. He's showing me the past, the things that I've done in the past. Because remember I said that everyone here is here for judgment. We're all here for judgment right now. So he showed me my past. Now I've always had a love for poetry, but not as much as I do right now. But um, I used to watch Deaf Poetry Jam um, back when it came on on HBO. I used to love Deaf Poetry Jam. 
I felt like I can relate to some of it. I understood it. I can relate to some of it. Um, but the, the time for me has been so dark right now. Um, and I've, um, this was led. It was a book that was the title grabbed me because I had been praying like, and I had really been seeking him earnestly and fasting and prayer and asking him to show me because I feel like he's trying to say some, tell me something that I'm not understanding. And, um, I've been asking about certain things, you know, um, you know, revelations and so forth. So he showed me through poetry. He showed, started showing me. And when I picked up the book, it started with one book that I first told you guys about, like a big, um, it has several different poets in it. Um, a whole bunch of it, it was twenty dollars. It grabbed me. I don't know why I picked it. It was divine. Um, hold on a second. I'm gonna give you the name of the, the, the book. But, um, it's a treasury of class, classic poetry. It has people like William Blake, um, Edgar Allan Poe, William Shakespeare. You know all different times of poetry. And this is, you know, these are divinely written. Okay, so for those of you, and they're very, they're very, they're in alignment with the Bible. Like if you, um, it goes back to me saying like, um, anytime God shows us anything, okay, that's for us. He shows us things through other people. Now the people may not even know what they're writing. They may not, they, you know, just because you're a writer doesn't mean that the writing is necessarily for you. They could be writing a story that applies to somebody else's life without really knowing that they're impacting another person's life or they just answered another question for a person. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I could be a writer and um, not knowing not knowing that I'm writing about something that somebody else would be able to relate to, that this is going to be an answer to what another person is going to need, a, a question that was asked for another person, if that makes sense. So when you look at these, these poets, when you look at these... Um, when you look at these poetries, when you look at these different um, poems, you relate to it. You can understand it. it. It's very clear to you. You understand it. And um, another thing that sold out that came to um, me was a book that was titled, um, This is What You've Been Looking For, right on the book. And um, this, is what you're, this, is your, this is what you've been looking for. So when you get that book, you open it and you understand everything. You understand it. And you understand and you just say, you just open your mouth and like, wow, this is it. This is confirmation. And you understand everything that's in it. And um, it's specific to you. It's, it, it all relates to you. And you just understand now. But that's how he shows us things. You, you know, he shows us things through whatever, it, you know, whatever it can be. Whatever it is that, you know, he leads you to. He's going to lead you to it. Right? He leads us to to revelation. He leads us to finding answers for things that we have asked about okay so we put all our trust in him and he guides us okay because the answer is out there he doesn't always come in the form of in, in a word and say well Quita, this is what it was and you know it's, it can be in a different format it can it can be a word from somebody else that somebody else gives okay it can be in a book it can be in a song it can be in, in many different forms okay the revelation that you need but when you get it when you hear it when you see it you will understand exactly what it is. You'll understand exactly what it is. And why? You say, well, why? What does this have to do with anything, Quita? Well, it has to do with a lot of things. Because in order to address the demons that are coming against you, this is what the spiritual warfare is. This is what the spiritual warfare is. This is what it's all about, the healing process. He's taking me through a healing process. He's taking me through restoration. He's trying to restore my soul. But the only way to deal, to deal with restoration is to address those demons. Okay. See, the problem with the world is they put a band-aid on the demons. You know, they don't want to experience pain. But what did the Lord say when, to the um, woman, to Eve, uh, Adam and Eve, when they um, disobeyed him? He said, Joe, you will bring forth birth in pain and sorrow. Well, guess what? The world found a way to get rid of the sorrow, to, to get rid of the pain. Okay, now they got anesthesia. So, the, you know, they got all of these different, these different ways of concealing. They get all these pleasurable things. You got depression, no problem. We got to peel for it. You got pain. We got we got some medication for it. You know, you got drugs. You got marijuana. You you know to numb the pain. You want well, alcohol. We numb the pain. But that's not healing. That's not the way to deal with pain. The way to deal with pain is to grieve it out. 
the way to deal with pain is to cry it out, pour out your, your, your soul. That's the way to deal with pain. You have to get rid of that. You can't let that dwell. You can't suppress it. So what you're trying, what you're really doing is saying, okay, I'm going to numb this pain right here. I'm going to put a little band-aid on it. But see, these create wounds because you still got that wound back there. Okay, and that wound begins to ooze. It begins to ooze and leak out. And you begin to get dirty and contaminated. Subconsciously, you are filthy. Okay, you're defiled and you're filthy. Your wounds stink. Okay, because you're now, you're burying all this pain. And you can't find satisfaction in your life because of why. There's something there that's creating, the, uh, that's absorbing your joy. That's absorbing your happiness. Okay, because the whole world wants to be happy, right? So they, they try to find happy juice to be happy. But happy is not taking happy. Happy is inside of you. Happy is what you, what you find on the inside of you. It's there. You just got to dig through all of the mess that you've created and, and, and address these demons that you um, have in your past. From lives that you destroyed, that you may have destroyed, or homes that you may have broken. Whatever the case, whatever your role was in the past, whatever you, whatever parts you paid in your, in your past, you have to address it now. Because when God heals, he's not a superficial healer. He goes from the root. He goes from deep inside. He goes to the core. He goes to the core of the problem. And he healed you. It ain't, you know, we're going to put a band-aid on this. And he goes and debris you. He debris that wound. For any of you who know or are in medicine or whatever, when you debris, you you get all that, you scrape. You scrape all that junk out. You got to get all of that junk out. You got to get in that wound and debris it and just and move it. Make it raw. Okay? And that process, it's like a detox. Okay? Because that's what healing is. That's what he does for you. So when you can really say, wow, I'm born again, I really am born again, I really am, he's really did heal me. And this is what one of my, my challenges was, because when he showed me who I was, I'm like, you know, I've been dealing, I'm like, that ain't me. No, uh -uh. And I was blaming somebody, you know, and I was battling this person, and I'm just like, that is not me, that's not me. I, can't, I couldn't identify with it. I couldn't identify with that person, because I look nothing like that person right now. I couldn't identify with it and I'm like fighting against it and I'm like and I'm denying it and I'm just like no that's not that's not who I am until I had to really come to terms with it and, and finally come to acceptance and say wow I'm disgusting I'm filthy I'm dirty so as he takes you through these this healing what happens is what's in the inside becomes to, to the, comes to the surface so you begin to look like the inside was your appearance starts to change it goes back to when job let's go to the book of job when job or job and my story is just like job it's just like you know when you go to job he um you know he cries out to the lord and that's what that's what it was some of you ask me well decree how do you deal with all of this how do you do you know nobody knows what i did you, you, I, you know i come on and i i talk to you you know i come in and it's like um, a girl putting a smile on a, on a, um, on a wound. I'm putting a, a smile. It's a crooked smile on a whole bunch of pain. On a whole bunch of pain. And um, it is hard to deal with. And I do have my moments of outbursts. I have my moments where it's just between me and God. But I'm not going to come here and and have outbursts. I can't, I'm not going to tell you that I don't deal with anything. I don't, I'm not going to tell you that this is easy for me because it's not. I will be lying to you. This is the biggest struggle I've ever had to deal with it's 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 very painful it's very difficult to deal with this and um there's a lot of times where I'm just going I'm on an emotional roller coaster to be honest with you every day my my mood can change but I know how to how to uh control myself in the public view like I'm not gonna take my frustrations out into the world because it's not the world's problem my problem is not the world's problem okay so I'm not gonna unleash my anger against the world because it has nothing to do. It's a personal issue. Okay, so this is not their fault. All right, this is just something that I'm going through personally, and I'm not gonna, you know, it's I'm not gonna unleash my anger on the world. Okay, um, at least knowingly, I'm not. So it goes back to what Job said when Job had to come to repentance in order to be restored. So he says, and I'm looking at Job chapter 42. He says, um, he says, I'm going to start at three. You ask, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand. 
things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. He says, listen, please, and let me speak. You said I, I will question you and you shall answer me. I have heard of you by hearing of ear, but now my eye sees you. So he's looking at his reflection. He's coming to himself. He's looking at his reflection. Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. So he's seeing the pain coming to the surface. How does pain look when it comes to the surface? It looks like the inside of you, dirty, filthy. You look sick. You look like you are, I look like, a, you know, thin. And you look, you just look, you don't look like yourself. People will be like, what happened to you? That's what pain looks like. What, what happened to you? What's she going through? So now he looks at himself in a different light and he's saying, wow, I'm abominable. I'm, I'm disgusting. You know, I'm disgusting. I bore myself. I hate that. I hate who I am. And I repent. Because the Lord has showed him. The Lord showed him who he, who he is. Who he was, rather. And that's what we're being judged on. So we have to we have to come to terms with that. And we have to realize that's part of the healing. And see, the world doesn't want you to heal. They want to just put something on top of it. They want you, because when you heal, you spiritually break out. You break out spiritually. That's that's spiritual awakening. That's really that's really going into higher dimensions. Now you really going into higher dimensions and higher realms. Now you really being used. When you get to that part where you come to repentance and you being restored and he cleaned you out, he cleaned all those dirty pipes out. Oh, he about to use you in a major way. You about to use, be used in a major way. That's why he's just cleansing. He has to cleanse. He's not a surface cleanser. He goes from the inside and he makes you deal with it. Like these are your demons you create. You got to address it. You got to address this. And you start addressing those demons. You can't dwell with me anymore. And you start to love. And you have to love and love yourself. And you have to understand that God is loving. He, if he can love you in that condition. In what you were. Then you have no. You have, you have to give it back. You have to give that love back to those who need it. And understand what you hated. Was you. What you absolutely could not stand. What you sat here and talked about. And, and complained about. And talked about was you. That was you. And you can't do anything but just give him so much thanks and so much praise because he forgave you and he loved you. And that, I mean, to love, to love that, to love you like that. And that's what Israel is. Israel, we, we are abominable. We did some wicked stuff. We damaged lives. We damaged lives. I mean, we really messed people up. So that's hard. That pain is hard to deal with. And that's a healing process. It takes, and it, you can't, he's like, you ain't going to, you ain't commit suicide for this. You ain't, I'm not, you ain't, you're not going to do drugs for this. You're going to take, you're going to take this pain. You're going to deal with this. He said, you will have, he told the woman, you are in travail. You're going to, you're going to birth this thing. You're going to birth this. you going to, you have to deal with this. You have to deal with this pain. You're going, and you're going to deal with pain. You're going to deal with this pain. So that's what he's saying. So it's one of those things where um, he shows us our past. He shows us in order for us to move forward. And we have to, it, it, you know, it's a healing process. And we have to deal with that healing. And um, because I, I was really having a hard time. I was having a hard time with the afflictions. And I just didn't understand. And it was just like, I just couldn't understand it. And so, I mean, I guess it just sunk in one, you know, the other day. And I'm just like, oh, wow. And I'm just like, the, you know, rightfully so. You know, rightfully so. So it's just one of those things that we have to understand. The things that he shows us. He's taking us through a transformation. He's taking us through a process in which we can learn to, to um, grow from and understand So it's just one of those things where you have to know who you are, know um, what he's doing in your life. And I'm not saying it's gonna, it's easy because, you know, it, it's not nothing is easy. Um, but the more you the more you understand, the more that you can appreciate what he's doing for you. And um, these are scars that you have created and um, you have to heal these scars. I don't know if you guys ever watched the Slumdog Millionaire. 
But Slumdog Millionaire is a great example of this. His, you know, he had a, a I love that movie. He, um, when the, the guy who went on the um, show, uh, who wants to be a millionaire, had a, a girlfriend from his youth. And um, he loved this girl. And um, she had, they had cut her face because he was, she was trying to get to him. And they found her. She left her, um, her husband because it was a forced marriage and she didn't want to be with him. And she escaped and um, tried to go meet him because the, the young man said that he would meet her where she was. But they found her and they cut her face. They sliced her face. So she had a wound. She had a scar on her face. And she was, you can tell that in the movie she was self-conscious because at the end, I don't really want to give away the movie if you didn't see it, but at the end, you know, he, they finally got together and um, he, um, she was so, you can see as he looked at her scar, she was self-conscious because she, she was beautiful and she had a long scar on her face from the knife slit and um, she was self-conscious when he like looked at the scar and touched it and um, he, you know, he knew she was self-conscious and he just kissed it and um, that was just so beautiful because it was just like love. It was just like, you know, I love you. Like, I know what you are. Like, I know you inside and out. It's, that's just like God, the love of God. He knows us like you guys say, oh, you handle it so well. But God knows me. God knows the good, ugly, and the bad. He knows me inside and out. He knows what's in the darkness. And um, he loves me. So, and that just, that's just confirmation. You know, when, you, when he can, when you can look at your past and he can say, he can look at my past and, you know, love me with that, that filthiness. You know what I'm saying? So it's um it's a blessing to know that he has brought me from that. It's such a blessing to know that he's healing me um inside and outside. So therefore I have to put my trust in him. My trust is solely in him because I see that he's doing a good thing and um he will never leave me nor forsake me. But it's some things we have to go through. And he's like, You gonna you gonna you gonna be crying and you're gonna be in pain in this. It's the woman in travail. The woman that is in travail, and she gonna have, we can't, but we can't medicate this. Okay, we can't medicate it, we can't drink it away, we can't smoke it away. You know, we got, we gotta deal with the pain. Okay, because that's part of the healing process, and it goes back to saying like, people that medicate the pain, you're not really suffering. Nobody wants to suffer, and that's the whole thing. You have to suffer with Christ. You have to, that's why it's going to be int really interesting in terms of what America does. But I'm going to tell you, people are going to rise up because this, I mean, when the, when the fire comes to the foot, people are going to, people are going to rise up for, the, for their Lord. When they see all hell breaking loose, they ain't taking up their cross now. But I, I guarantee you, when all hell start, when they start taking these rights away, the people are going to be, people are going to be rising up. And um, I know they are because they, um, they, they, now they're going to see with their own self, with their own eyes, and they're not going for it. They're not going to go for the FEMA camps. They're not going for it. And they're going to stand for the Lord. And these, a, lot of, a lot of people are going to be martyred um, because of that. So it's one of those things where um, we can um, definitely know that um, the nation will rise up when that, when that time comes. But we don't like pain. We don't like to suffer. Okay, anything that involves suffering, we don't want no part of it. Why? Because we, we're used to feeling good. This, this nation loves to feel good. This love, nation loves to be high. This nation gets their pain, gets their happiness from, from things. Okay, they don't find it within themselves. They find it in things in this world, you know, their wealth, their, their, and they're not even happy with that. So I can't even say that. Okay, so everything is a feel good. You know, they want to feel good. So nobody wants to go through the pain. So it's just going to be interesting from that perspective when all hell breaks loose and people try to get rid of that pain by, he said, people will try to even seek death, but they won't be able to, they won't be able to die because, you know, you got to deal with the pain. You have to deal with that. Okay. That's what this world does. It, it patches things up and like, we can make you feel good. We got different stages of, of uh, of um, anesthesia for you to um, have children now. You don't even go through the childbirth like they used to go through crying and kicking and screaming and cussing. You don't do that anymore. They put you to sleep. I want to go to sleep. I want happy juice. You know, everybody wants to feel good. So the Lord is like, you know, mm -mm, that's not, it's going to be the woman in travail. And he's going to take you through the storm. 
and you gonna um you gonna take you through it, and then ain't gonna be no happy juice. So this is one of the things where um people need to prepare themselves. But I found a lot of my answers in poetry. It's crazy, a lot of various books in poetry. Poetry is very therapeutic. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. That's part of my healing. That's part of the transformation that he's taking me from. That's part of the healing process because you have to heal. He has to bring it to your attention. Okay. He brings it to your attention, what you've done. Okay. Then I think there's a phase where you kind of, you, you're uncertain as to what you're seeing or what you're, he's showing you. You struggle with it. You deny, you deny it or blame it on somebody else. You think it's somebody else he's showing you. <laughs> what is you? So you deny it. So you, you know, you, you go back and forth with that. Then you finally come to terms because he keeps showing you it. And you're finding it in, in different forms and, and, um, and so forth. And then it gets to the point where you can't deny it no more. You have to, you have to address it. And when you address it, then you come to repentance and you fully repent and you can repent and you can receive some sort of closure and you can cast those demons out and say, you know, I've, I've addressed you already. And, um, I, you know, I'm healed. I'm already healed from this. And claim it. I'm already healed from this. You can't dwell here anymore. I erase you with the blood of Yeshua. I have the blood stand banner hanging over my head right now. And um, atonement was made for my sins. And I'm, I'm good. And I have suffered already. And I've overcome this. I've overcome as Christ has overcome the world. That's it. You know what I mean? So that's one of the things that we have to make sure that we're coming to terms with. We have to know our power. You know, it's just like a gentleman, I was at the bookstore today, and I asked the gentleman, you know, um, is he ready for the return of Christ? And he was like, he's Muslim. And I'm just like, um, and, you know, and I understand, you know, you get into a lot of different uh, doctrines as in terms of, you know, why their religion is the best and so forth and why they're, but nobody really knows. And I understand that, like. This is like the Jehovah Witness coming to your door, trying, and I'm like, no, I'm Christian, and I'm not, I'm not gonna change. And that's how he was today. I'm not changing. I'm Muslim, and I can, I understand that, you know, because that's not from, that's not my area of expertise. It's not my, my job to convince him. You know, all I can do is provide the information, but I can't sit there and I'm not gonna go back and forth with him because he's made up his mind. That has to come through the Lord. So the only thing I can do is ask him, do we know him? And you know, whether or not he wants to, you know, take it any further, that's not for me to do. So, but. I just wanted to say this to make this point. In any type of, this is one thing you need to consider. And this is for everybody, for you to, this is a takeaway for everybody. Because I said to myself, well, I said, well, how do you know which one is the right one? Because we're all, there's so many different doctrines out there. So technically, they have a good, I, I understand it. That's just like somebody saying, well, how do you know? And then it just came to me right there. Because like, how do you, how do you argue that? Then you say, look at what's the root cause of everything? Sin. Sin is the root cause of everything. Sin is the root cause of everything that, that creates condemnation. If you are considered con condemned, if your sin has not been addressed. So who addresses the sin problem? Anytime you want to find out what's the right, what's the right faith, who addresses the sin problem that leads to condemnation? If Buddha doesn't address the sin problem, if Hindu doesn't address the sin problem, we're, uh, speaking of the atonement of Yeshua Hamachiak, then th that's that's your answer right there. That's your answer right there because the world is going to be be judged based on sin, based on uh, sin that leads to death. So if nobody is addressing the sin problem, and they just giving you feel good stuff, then um, if none of those doctrines are addressing that. Then that's your answer right there. Okay? That's not the right choice for you because you're looking for salvation, right? So um. That's about it. You know, I just wanted to share that with you because I thought that was very interesting. Um, a lot of us find things um, that we can utilize to give us strength in these dark times because it is the time is dark, and um, we try we tend to seek more knowledge and, and seek more revelation, and we tend to um, search because it, there's no inner peace within yourself because you don't know who you are fully. You don't know. You don't know. Um, you know, when you lack, when you when you have a sense of lack, um, you can't really move forward effectively. Like, it goes back to what the song says, the change I want to see must first begin with me. How can I, how can I 
lead effectively, right? If I have, if there's still answers that I have within myself, if I'm still seeking and searching, how can I be an effective leader where I don't, I have to first know myself fully inside out. I first, I first have to know myself before I can help anyone on a larger scale. You know, so it's, it comes to a point where you have to look at your inner self and begin to um, look at it analytically and address these things that come against you. And um, that's it. That's what it is. That's what it all boils down to. So and that's what I've learned to do. So I'm just, you know, you cast down these imaginations. You cast down these illusions. We know that the world is an illusion. And you renounce it. You have no part of this world. You are simply spirit in this world. And you walk in the spirit. You think in the spirit. Everything that comes against you, you renounce it. It goes back to what the Lord showed me a dream a while ago. And I woke up in that dream. And I said, I'm divergent. And that wasn't me speaking. I don't know if that were really what that voice that said that. I don't, that was not me. Or maybe I could say it was probably my inner self. But that was not something I would have said. So that was just really strange. I remember it was a dream that a wolf and a pig was in my house. And it kept getting, the wolf kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Every time I speak, it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was calling my husband because I had a two family, two families, um, two family, uh, two family, two story family room. And the wolf kept getting bigger and bigger. And I'm calling my husband to come out and help him. He's still in the bed sleep. And um, then as it kept getting bigger, it was almost like, was right at the balcony. And it was almost like right in my face. And then I woke up in the dream and I, I just remember saying I'm divergent. And that r really meant that it's not real. Like that has no impact on me. It, it, it's, it's, it's not real. It's an illusion. Like I knew like that it wasn't real. It's an imagination. And you have to cast them down. You know, a lot of these things, a lot of these wars, these battles are basic, are simply projections that come from our subconscious that are lies. Okay. It's in, it, in, and until you address it, and until you uproot those trees that have been planted by the wicked kingdom, you have to uproot those trees and those demons and say, and you know, I, I cleanse you out with the blood of your shoe. I flush you out. I'm, I cleanse you out. You can't dwell here anymore. You're a liar. You're not real. And that's it. For we know that the world is nothing but a dream. We know that we're in a dream state. We know that the enemy has already been defeated. We know once you know the power of the mind. You realize that a lot of these things that, that are taking place are not, nothing but imaginations. Nothing but things that are coming from the subconscious. Nothing but projections that are coming from your, your subconscious. And once you understand that, the way that the mind works, the, the images that come off right now. This, this goes back to what the Lord showed me that I'm in a simulation. And this is true because the world is not real. And you have to start breaking that world apart. That world that exists in your head and in your subconscious. That lie, that imagination, that matrix that exists in that subconscious. You know, it's like Lawrence Hale said in that, in that song, I Get Out, or um, The Mystery of Iniquity. Repent and let your mind be retaught. Okay? Troubled by the thoughts that you keep, the idols you heap, causing the destruction you reap. So it's just like you have to repent and let your mind be retaught because you have a whole bunch of lies that have invaded your subconscious. Okay, a lot of different indoctrinations, a lot of different beliefs that have to come out. They have to be cleansed out. And you have to start, don't ignore these things. Start speaking to these things and saying to them, you can't dwell here. You have no room. There's no room for you here. The blood of Yeshua resides here. The spirit of the living God lives here. You cannot dwell here any longer. And you have to address it. And you're an imagination. You're not real. And you're not part of my reality. And that's it. And, um... That's really it. That's how you approach this thing. It's um, one of those things that takes time. But the Lord said, you have to address this. This has to be addressed from you. And um, a lot of our sin comes from the kidneys. It's something, I, if any of you understand this, let me know. The whole bittersweet thing. It's something about, it's just like when they gave Yeshua the bitter, um, the sour wine on the cross. Um, it's something with the kidneys. It, uh, the kidneys house sin or something. It's something with that where you have to do. If any of you understand understand any of that, let me know, please. But um, that that's the root cause. Of, that's where sin is basically stored. Those a lot of those demons are stored. They they try to attack your spirit. Your spirit resides in your inner belly, and they try to suppress you. They don't want you to break out spiritually. 
So they send demons against you. They send all, you know, all types of attacks against your spirit um, to prevent you from breaking out. Because when you break out, you, you it's it's on. I'm telling you, when you break out, it's it's they, they ain't gonna be able to hold you. When when you break out, there ain't gonna be nothing they gonna be able to do with you. And this is gonna be a domino. It's just gonna be like you're gonna be breaking other people out. It's like, oh, she out now. She's gonna be breaking everybody else out. It's just like when the dragon um went after the woman. You know, because in those who had what? The testimony of Jesus Christ. Because why? Because Jesus, if you have the testimony, they can't, they ain't, they ain't going to stop you. If you know, if you saw his power, if you are a witness to, to his, to his work and his power, they're not going to be able to stop you. That's just like, you know, you ain't going to be able to shut them, nobody up. You ain't going to be able to shut them up. And it's just like when you, if you watch the movie Risen, when all of them, when all of them had, when they know that he rose. And everybody was like, I don't care what you do to me. You can't, you ain't going to be able to shut them. There's nothing you can do to me. Like, it's like, it, it comes to that point where it's like, you nothing you can say will change my mind. I'm a believer. I'm, he rose and that's it. And I witnessed it. And that's a testimony. Anybody, anytime somebody can rise from the grave. Anytime somebody can rise from the grave, from the dead, then you, I mean, you defied all the, all the, the world laws. You, you just basically... You, I mean, you just broke every rule in the world right there. So this is just something that, um, when you had that testimony, that's why that's what the dragon doesn't want. He doesn't want anybody getting free that knows the testimony. Because why? Because that's the truth. That's the truth. And and when you know that, ain't nobody ain't nobody gonna be able to stop you. They ain't gonna be able to shut you up. So it's just one of those things. Um, that's why he's after. He's after the woman. Okay. So, it, you know, that's just, um, you know, just get ready for everything to just come to pass. Cause that's, that's exactly what we're about to see. We're about to see all of this being on build in the earth and all of you just get ready to repent, you know, seek the Lord with all your heart. Um, for those of you who still need answers, search him out with all your heart. I'm telling you, he will answer you. He will show you. He will show you. He may not answer you with, okay, Maria, this is what you do. You know, it may not be that kind of answer. He may answer you in a different way. It may come from somebody else. It may be, he may show lead you to a video. He may show you in poetry. He may show you in a book or whatever. But you have to pay attention for receiving your answer. Whatever you ask him for, make sure that you're looking for your answer. And he, he will make sure that you see it. Okay? So that is it. So I will be doing a live broadcast um, sometime this week, if not tomorrow. Um, uh, perhaps, probably maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. All right, so just stay tuned, um, guys, and um, make sure you give your life to Christ if you haven't, and um, be blessed. Shalom.